Well, hey guys, uh, Thorzax here. Welcome back. I have had as much success as a one-legged man at a butt-kicking contest because I've got too many irons in the fire. I've got the K31 thing going. I've got the 44 Special thing going. I'm prepping a whole bunch of 308 brass. And what else? Well, I'll think of it here in a minute. So, anyway, got a little bit of unboxing here. Uh, save that for a minute. All right. Last year, uh, as you guys know, I bought the Bulldog. And the Bulldog was a great gun. I mean, it's a great self-defense gun. Uh, I don't, I can't, I can't take anything away from that gun for what I bought it for. Uh, the price is right. The double action is sweet on it. And I'll tell you what, it's just a really nice little pistol. If you guys haven't really considered, you know, buying a, a double action large bore uh, pistol, you know, for personal defense, take a look at the uh, Bulldog, you know, from Charter Arms. Uh, it's quality made. I've, I, I'll tell you what, I've put over, oh, it must be at least... 1500 rounds through that gun and I've put some pretty abusive loads through it and you know I mean it's held together I mean it's just as tight as the day I bought it so anyway enough about the Bulldog what I did is I got another acquisition here and uh, kind of treated myself this is my Christmas present to me uh, Bud's Gun Shop had an exclusive and They are offering the Ruger Bisley, as you can see, the Ruger Bisley in the 44 Special. Now this is their uh, standard Black Hawk model. Uh, it's the flat top, as you can see. Um, just a just really nice gun. I haven't even shot it yet. I mean, it's still brand new. So, let's go ahead. Yeah, she's she's still really tight. You know that new gun feel. They give you this little plastic cap, you know, for storage, you know, for people that, you know, store their firearms, they can stick that in there and then they know the gun's unloaded. So, which is a good idea. I never use it, but you know, it's a good idea. Anyway, so this is chambered in 44 special and uh what I'm hoping is that this gun will have some surprising results with the uh, with the 44 Special, and I'm able to get some more target accuracy out of it. The one thing that was a real detractor right away, though, is that this gun comes with about a six and a half pound trigger pull. It's too heavy for um, you know for target use. Uh, they do that for legal reasons, you know. Uh, the trigger doesn't have any creep in it, though. I mean, there's no bumps or scars or anything like that. I mean, it's it's pretty. It lets off really well. Uh, so anyway, so that's what I did. So I went out and I went and got me a, a Wolf Trigger Spring Pack, you know, from uh, Brennell's. And this is the reduced uh, hammer spring and also the trigger spring assembly. It's very simple to put in. Just take the grips off. Uh, you cock the gun, there's a little hole at the bottom of the stirrup, you put that through there, that captivates the spring and then it just comes right out. You just pull it right out through the side and then it, it'll release itself from the stirrup in the hammer. And then with the hammer spring, the hammer spring right here, this little, you know, doodad right here goes right, on, right underneath, you know, the, the trigger and you just latch it in there and then there's two posts on either side that you bring the little wings up on. Let's see if you can see that. Well, anyway, there's there's two little wings that go up and over this little uh, you know, this little post that's inside there and that's it. That's basically it. It's very simple to, you know, change out. Um, and that will reduce the trigger down to about two and a half pounds. Now, there's a lot of people out there that probably would say, well, you know, that's not really safe for hunting, you know, a two and a half pound trigger pull. Well, I'll tell you one thing right now. I never pull the hammer back on a gun until I have the front sight into the, uh, you know, into the target that I'm going to shoot at. I never have my finger in the trigger guard either. I mean, when I, when I pull back, I'm ready to go. 
I wait until I get good side alignment and I'm aiming. Then I put my f finger on the trigger. So two and a half tr two and a half pound trigger pulls, you know, fine for me. I mean, I'm going to shoot more accurately with it. It's just it, it's it's just a training thing, you know, how to train your mind. So anyway, uh, I wanted to put together this little short video. There she is. Uh, I haven't even went out to the range yet. You guys will uh, uh, be exclusive on that. I'll uh, take it out and break it in. Um, I've been loading some 240 grain round nose lead bullets and I've also been uh, loading some uh, 44 Russian for it uh, with a 245 grain Keith and I've also loaded some 245 grain Keith uh, bullets um, in the 44 special cases uh, and we'll go out there and we'll run those through. Um, like I said, I've been really busy with a lot of different projects. Uh, I, I had probably a whole can of a whole coffee can of 240 grain round nose lead bullets that I hadn't um, you know lubricated and sized yet. So I got that done. Then you know I've got 500 pieces of 308 brass that I'm processing, and uh, you know those will be done here pretty soon. Uh, I got to run them through the Anilis machine. Uh, also the K31 rifle uh, with the sights. I've been doing some hand loading for that and developing some hand loads for it. I got the new sights on it and uh, I got to re-zero that and get that back out to the range and get that thing going. Uh, don't mean to let you guys down, you know? I mean, uh, don't mean to let you guys down. I wanted to show you guys something. We'll be right back. So, some M80 ball and this is what I've been processing look at that you can't tell that from brand new I'll tell you one thing wet tumbling your brass it just makes it turn out like brand new and once you anneal it and you go ahead and you know swage the primer pockets they're all cut to length um, you know this is like brand new brass this is once fired M80 ball you know you know, I got packs and packs of this stuff now, so I'm good to go. So when we get the Remington 700 out there, uh, or you know, I might even take my Remington 7, uh, 788 out there, and we'll do a little shooting with that. I got a, I got plenty of brass. I got plenty of brass to uh, to draw from. So anyway, uh, that's my information video. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing away, or uh, do the trigger on it tonight and uh, get that thing going and the next video that we go to will be at the range and that's going to be with the K31. I want to get that going. I have those loads with uh, H4895 I want to shoot. I also have to reside it back in uh, because I found out that the uh, rear sight actually sits on top of the receiver. Um, I had it up above just a smidge, you know, above the the uh, back of the receiver because I didn't want it touching it. I didn't think it was supposed to touch it. And uh, so, you know, I just kind of eyeballed it and see if it was, you know, kind of straight. And then I tightened the screw. And when I went online, I looked at a lot of uh, other guys' rifles out there um, and the way that they mounted their uh, rear sight on their K31. And it, sure enough, it's sitting on top of the receiver. So what I did is I took a piece of electrical tape and cut it to fit underneath the uh, rear sight and stuck it on there so it wouldn't mar the finish on the uh, receiver and I set her back down and tightened her up so I still have to recite that back in so I got some solder shots already made with a, a known load you know from the Sierra manual with 168 grain uh, you know uh, match king bullets and uh, IMR 4064 I think it's uh, 43.9 grains so anyway so I got that going for me. So anyway, this is Thor's Axe, and until we get back out there again, uh, you guys have good shooting to you, and we'll see you again.